Hello and welcome, Pokemon fans. There are those who call me Bardbreaker, and it's time for another Sunday Pokemon Challenge run. And this time, it's a special one. We're celebrating 1,000 subscribers here on the old YouTube. Seriously, folks, thank you all so much for coming along for the ride. I know it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, but if my videos bring at least a little entertainment to your day, then that's pretty good for me. I'm so humbled by all the love and support I've seen in your comments, and I look forward to seeing what's to come. Speaking of what's to come, today we're doing a special one. Today we're going to ask and answer the question, can I beat Pokemon Leaf Green using only the weakest Pokemon in the entire game, Sunkern. Yes, I know now there's a solo form of wishy-washy, but that didn't exist until Gen 7, and there's also Blipbug, but that doesn't exist until Gen 8, so this is as weak as it gets for this point in Pokemon history. And what better way to celebrate 1,000 subscribers than by doing one of the hardest runs there is? Sunkern has the abysmal stat total of 180, which is evenly distributed across all stats at 30 points apiece. That makes it pretty much brutally low in everything, and is obviously going to be one of the biggest problems we have to overcome. Moveset-wise, really isn't god-awful at first glance. We have Absorb and Growth right out of the gate, which will make an interesting combination, even if our stats are pretty low. We learn Mega Drain relatively early, and that's going to be pretty nice. And the fact that Brock and Misty are our first two main obstacles early will be in our favor since we have the type advantage. I foresee we're going to have major problems though with Blaine and Lorelei, as well as Agatha since all ghosts in Kanto are part poison, but we'll have to cross those bridges if and when we get there. Who knows, we may actually get to go for the old sunny day solar beam combination this run if nothing else. We'll have to see what happens. Anyway, at this point guys, I'd like to remind you that I write the script as I go and I haven't started playing yet. Everyone make your guesses down below to please the almighty algorist, god of the YouTube algorithm, and let me know if you think I can do this or not. This is one I'm actually pretty iffy on. I know Madrybred was able to beat Crystal with one, but the only run I could find where someone tried this in Kanto, he failed, so we may have a spot of bother here. We'll have to see what we can do. Lastly, as we begin, let's take a final look at our rules. In battle, I can only use Sunkern. I'll need other Pokemon for HMs, but I won't be allowed to use those Pokemon in battle. I won't be using any items in battle. Held items and items outside of battle will be allowed, though. And lastly, no cheats, glitches, or exploits. So let's begin. Right out of the gate, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Bulbasaur with Sunkern so we can do the entire run with it. This will also ensure that our rival takes the Fire Starter and have the hardest for us to fight against. Because this wasn't going to be enough of a challenge already. I nickname our Sunkern, CDOT, because Sunkern is so bad that it honestly thinks CDOT is something worth aspiring to become. To no one's surprise at all, we lose our first fight against our rival Tim. Who could have seen that coming? Anyway, we take a look at our stats, and we're adamant nature, which means more attack and less special attack. Oh, for God's sakes, really? Come on. Grass type is all special in Gen 3, so what the heck, game? Well, this is gonna suck way more than I thought it would. But hey, if we can somehow pull this off, that's gonna be even sweeter. But for now, it's time for Package Delivery Simulator again, and then we get to level up and grind. Oh, and our ability is Chlorophyll, which boosts our speed and harsh sunlight, but that'll probably never come up. But anyway, on to that grinding we were talking about, and... Yeah, just look at this battle against a level 3 Rattata. We lose. We lost a fight against a level 3 Rattata. That is not a good omen at all. Several failed attempts at Rattata later, and we're finally up to level 6 and learn growth, which will be very, very helpful. While grinding, we stop and catch a Mankey for strength later, nicknaming it Bicepticus the 27th. Long may he lift. And later, a Spiro for fly later, nicknaming it Flapsody the 27th. Long may she fly. Several episodes worth of the Clone Wars later, and we've ground our way through Viridian Forest and reached Brock at level 16. We've learned Mega Drain along the way, and he's a one-shot sweep through both of his team, who are four times susceptible to grass moves. And that's one badge in the books, and we're finally able to move forwards. Mountain Moon is actually rather annoying due to all the Zubat and Paris, which resist our grass moves, but we do catch a Clefairy here for Flash later, nicknaming it Flashelius the 27th. Long, Long may she shine. shine. We make our way into Cerulean City and head straight for the Water Gym. We throw a growth in to start off, but we just use Mega Drain over and over to take Misty and her stars right out of the sky. Her Starmie can hit decently hard with Water Pulse, but I don't think we were ever in really significant danger here. We try the rival fight on Nugget Bridge north of town, but we just can't deal with his Pidgeotto yet. We're just not strong enough. We try over and over, but we're just too weak. Pidgeotto and later Pidgeot are gonna be big roadblocks this run. We're gonna have to grind. And honestly, we don't have a lot of options for grinding here. We can only grind on this one patch of grass west of town, and at least we're in leaf green, so Sandshrew spawn here sometimes instead of Ekans. It's still a bit of a grind to get our levels higher up, but at level 30 we try our rival again. And he's still very difficult to get past, even if we do manage to knock out the Pidgeotto, we have a Charmander right after it to deal with. We have to keep making attempts until we get a run where the Pidgeotto chooses to go for sand attacks rather than gusts to start with. 
I know it's counterintuitive that we would want to be hit with Sand Attack, but Gust just does too much damage for us to deal with. This finally allows us to get 4 or 5 growths in place before we go on the attack. We also have to get lucky with our accuracy, obviously. Fortunately we do and bring down the Pidgeotto. Charmander is next, but we get a lucky critical hit to do a lot of damage and nearly bring it down on its own. Another hit brings us past the Charmander and it's pretty much smooth sailing from here. We ingrain on the Abra, which can't attack just in case, but that allows us to get some health back, and then we miss a couple of Mega Drains on the Rattata before finally taking it down to move the plot along. Now we can finally move up Nugget Bridge and make our way to Bill. Nugget Bridge and the route up to Bill are actually both great places to grind here on some trainers. There's a few hikers here with Geodude and Onyx that are easy victories for us. We do struggle a wee bit against the trainers who have Pokemon like Oddish, which double resist our moves, and a couple of the Nidorans that actually knew Peck, for some reason. But eventually we grind our way to Bill and discover the man who has perfected the splicing technique from Batman Beyond a lot earlier than the show led us to believe, and we get the SS ticket for our trouble. With that, we can head south to Vermilion City and finally do the SSN. On our way out of town though, we stop and catch a Meowth for Cut later, nicknaming it Snipticus the 27th. Well, may he cut, as well as several more Meowths for their ability Pickup. It's an ability that allows a Meowth a 10% chance to pick up and hold an item after each Pokemon we knock out in battle. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, the loot table was changed to look more like a vegan's wet dream since it's mostly berries, but we do have a small chance to pick up things like rare candies, power point ups, nuggets, and the TM for hidden power. We aren't going to get a lot of those, but they will be helpful to at least some degree for sure. We clear out the trainers on the SSN, but as predicted, we're having a hard time against the rival. Again, the combination of Pidgeotto and Charmeleon is a rough one-two punch to get past. On our best attempts, we get our accuracy obliterated with Sand Attack, and we just can't hit anything. Guess we're going to have to level up a bit and do some more damage. So rather than leveling up, we fortunately found that one of our Meowths had picked up the TM for Hidden Power along the way, and I teach it to Sunkern. After testing out what type we have, we discover we actually have the Electric Hidden Power, which is super helpful here. Also, Electric is special, so it'll get a boost from growth. Even better. So finally, after numerous attempts, we get a run where we have enough accuracy luck to set up three growths so that we can do enough damage to bring down the Pidgeotto and the Charmeleon while also still having enough health left to not be finished off by a quick attack from the Raticate that comes out next. Trying to keep us in the fight, I start to go for Mega Drains against the Rattata and then against the Kadabra, and after over an hour of attempts, literally, we're finally able to get past our rival. From there, we massage the Captain of the Love Boat and get our reward. HM for cut, you pervs. Get your head out of the clouds. Afterwards, we leave the ship and head straight for Lieutenant Surge's gym. We get his trash can puzzle on literally the first can we picked, and then the battle begins. We set up a couple of gross for safety, but then we just mega drain down his team. Raichu comes out and sets up some double teams of its own, which really affects our ability to land a hit. Our power points for mega drain are dwindling, but fortunately we land enough hits through his evasion buffs and our paralysis, but we take him down and secure the next badge. I was really not looking forward to having to use an electric type hidden power against an electric gym if we ran out of mega drains. Army Meowths haven't gotten us any power point ups though, so we're gonna have to see what happens. After that, we go catch a few Pokemon so that we can get the HM for Flash to use on our trip through Rock Tunnel. Now that we're in Celadon City, we go to the Team Rocket hideout, and it does take a few attempts going in and out before we can get to Giovanni. Once we get to Giovanni though, we don't have any issues. Giga Drain takes down the Onyx and the Rhyhorn, and after a few growths, we're able to bring down the Kangaskhan as well. With that, we can secure the Silph Scope for our trouble and head on back to Lavender Town. Once there, it's time to take on Tower Tim once again. He's still opening with the Pidgeotto, and we're by no means safe to set up, but we don't really have a choice. Fortunately, it goes for a Sand Attack and a Gust, allowing us two growths. We can then use our Hidden Power to bring it down. From there, it's a relatively straightforward jaunt through the rest of his team. That was honestly probably the easiest fight that we've had against him up to this point, and will probably be the easiest fight we'll have against him all game. And that is saying something considering he has a Gyarados now, but it is quad weak to electricity, so that probably had something to do with it. Once we climb the tower, we rescue Mr. Fuji and get the Poke Flute to wake up the sleeping Neckbeard, um, Snorlax, and we can get on our adventure. So now that we've gotten the Poke Flute and have run Team Rocket out of town, we have three mandatory things we have to do. The good news is we can do them in any order. The bad news is they all suck for a Sunkern. We can either do the Grass Gym, the Poison Gym, or the Sylphco Building and Rival Fival. None of those look good by any means. I guess we'll try the Grass Gym first. And nope, nope, that's not working at all. So I go down to Fuchsia City and get the HM for Surf from the Safari Zone. We can't surf outside of battle yet without the badge from Koga's gym, but that's not happening here either. Guess we're gonna have to level. Even at level 59, we still cannot get past Erika's victory bell. Well, this is a disaster. We also can't get past Rival Fievel's Pidgeot either, nor are we beating Koga. 
All right, I guess it's time to power level. I don't see any other way around it. At level 62, after trying again and again at all three options, I finally get a run against Erica that starts promising. I have a Cherry Berry equipped to deal with Stun Spore, but her Victory Bell misses it twice in a row, allowing us a chance to set up three gross before she finally hits us with a Poison Powder. Now, as bad as poisoning is, we can actually deal with that with Giga Drain and Synthesis. What we can't deal with is losing speed and turns to paralysis, so I can actually work with this. From there, I just have to spam Giga Drain over and over again. Tangela goes down easy as it's only half as resistant as Victory Bell is to grass attacks and outlasts is her Vile Plume. But again, our Giga Drain keeps us in the fight and finally, mercifully, we can at least check one box off the list. It doesn't really do a lot for us, it only lets us use strength outside of battle which until we can serve somewhere relevant isn't really super critical, but at least it's progress. Now we still have to beat rival Fievel and Koga, but I mean, progress is progress at least. Both options are progressing better now that I've swapped out hidden power with return, but we're just not quite hitting hard enough. We're gonna have to grind again. I go back to Vermilion City and get the Versus Seeker to aid in grinding as rebattling trainers gets us more experience than wild Pokemon, but even after some time grinding up to level 70, we're still not beating Koga or rival Fievel. We are making good progress on Koga, so with a few more levels he should be possible. Rival Fievel's gonna be rough though thanks to this one-two punch of Pidgeot and Charizard now. I decide to save time and go ahead and use some of the rare candy that I've accumulated through pickup and try Koga again at level 75. And now we finally do remarkably well. It's likely thanks in no small part to Toxic missing, but we're able to survive a sludge decently well and can set up a third growth. That gives us the extra oomph we need as after Muck goes down to two returns, his coughing goes down to a Giga Drain and we can take down the Weezing and finally, mercifully, we've made progress. Now I can finally surf down to Cinnabar Island. We still haven't beaten the rival in Sylphco yet, but you know, one thing at a time. Before we go down to Cinnabar Island, we need something for surf, so we go south of town and catch a Krabby to do that, nicknaming it Aquades the 27th, long as she swim, and head down to Cinnabar. And finally, after some grinding and more rare candy usage, we get to Blaine at level 80, and it's just not quite working. His intimidates are just brutally murdering our attack stat, but I do have a plan. We may be okay if we can level up a bit. We're actually kind of close to one-shotting his team despite the Intimidates, at least up to the Arcanine. Let's grind up a bit and come back. One of the things I try at this point is Rival Fievel again. I still can't one-shot the Pidgeot or the Charizard, but I do have a strategy that will work if luck aligns our way. Pidgeot is out first and will always hit a wing attack, but we can survive it reasonably well enough, though it does unfortunately land for a crit. Charizard is next, and even from full health, we will not survive a flamethrower, but we can one-shot it if we get a crit, which we do. Next out is the Execute, so I heal up with a Synthesis as it misses Stun Spore. I start setting up growths here as it lands a Stun Spore and we heal it with a Cherry Berry. Finally, its third Stun Spore sticks, and now we're in a bit of trouble, but we've gotten our three growths in and we go for Giga Drain to bring it down. Alakazam is next and sets up a future side as we're paralyzed, but just goes for Calm Mind and we're able to hit it with Return to bring it down. Last out is Gyarados, which chunks our attack with Intimidate, but we go for Giga Drain, which hits hard. It's a tense moment because he lands a crit, but we're finally able to bring him down and mercifully move past Rival Fievel. We heal up and then head back to Giovanni. Giovanni does start out a bit testy as his Nidorino puts up a good resistance to a growth enhanced Giga Drain, but a return finishes the job. Nidoqueen gives us the chance to set up another growth and we do more damage with Giga Drain now and can bring it down. Kangaskhan nearly goes down in one hit, but just hits Rage and we bring it down with another. Last out is Rhyhorn, who easily goes down to one quad effective Giga Drain. With that nightmare of a building out of our way, we can go take on Blaine or Sabrina. I don't think we've got enough levels yet, so let's clear out the Psychic Gym first. And we absolutely mop the floor with Sabrina. A lot of Psychic Pokemon tend to have paper thin defense. We're vastly over leveled and we hit very hard with a max friendship return. So even though we beat the crap out of Sabrina, we haven't really leveled up very well, so we're gonna have to grind a bit before taking on Blaine. While grinding, I take the time to go to the power plant and beat up on Zapdos. I don't know why, I guess I just kind of wanted the experience for beating a legendary. So I decide to settle on mostly spending my time here grinding in Pokemon Mansion on Cinnabar. We're strong enough to one-shot just about everything here without issue, and there's really nowhere better to grind. It sucks that we can't get into Victory Road or even the Viridian Gym because there's a lot of trainers with better experience yields there that we could grind off of much easier. But I decide to grind up to level 88. At that point I have enough rare candy left to make the last jump to level 100, which will certainly need to be, but I'd like to beat as much as I can before getting there. I decide to burn a few more rare candy for the Fire Gym, pun, and level up to 95 and try this again and again. I know it's doable, we just need everything to go right for us. And finally, we get this run. Growlithe is out first and intimidates us, so we set up a growth as it misses Fire Blast. We go for growth again and it hits Fire Blast. At this point, we Giga Drain to heal up and bring it down. Ponyta is next and we go for a third growth and it hits hard with a Fire Blast, but we're just able to survive it, 
and go for a Giga Drain to bring it down. Rapid Ash is next, and we bring it to red health with a Giga Drain as it misses Fire Blast. At this point, I start thinking and realize Blaine is going to Hyper Potion, so I go for a fourth growth since now we get two attacks in a row. After the fourth growth is in place, we're able to one shot the Rapid Ash. Arcanine is next, and we hit it hard with a Giga Drain, and it misses Fire Blast, and we finish it off with a second Giga Drain. Whew, that was intense. We had to reset so many times, but we didn't have to resort to any cheese yet. We just beat Blaine with a Sunker, no cheese, and not being level 100. I'd say that alone is pretty impressive enough, but there's still more to come. We fly back to Viridian City and take on the Ground Gym. None of his trainers stand a chance, and to be honest, neither does Giovanni. I set up a growth on the Rhyhorn for safety, and we just blow away his entire team with Giga Drain in return. Only Nidoqueen survived, but it just hit a weak body slam, a phrase you don't normally hear, and we secure our final badge without incident. It's not smooth sailing though, we still have another rival fight with Tim before we can even get to the Elite Four. Let's give it a try. Oh, and it's not happening. Okay then. Well, that's a major problem. We aren't even reliably getting Charizard down to half health with a return. That means we may very well not one-shot it with a crit. This is going to be dicey. Leveling up to 100 likely isn't going to give us that guarantee either, so if we can't do it here, we certainly aren't going to be able to do it against the champion. We're going to have to come up with a different strategy by then. So for the immediate problem, we come up with this plan. My boyfriend suggested we get rid of return and try growths plus hidden power. I'm honestly dubious of getting rid of such a strong attack, but looking ahead, I don't think there's a need for it, but I may regret that later. So I do just that. I get rid of Return for our Electric-type Hidden Power again, since we've got several copies of the TM from Pickup. Pidgeot is first, and while it's not great to set up against because it knows Wing Attack and Gust, we're weathering the hits quite well and we're able to get all six of our growths in place. We had to spread a few syntheses in there as needed, but once we got all six growths in place, we go for Giga Drain, which one-shots the Pidgeot despite its type advantage and heals us back to green. Charizard is next, and we have to one-shot it or we die to Flamethrower from full HP. Never mind our current, but we managed to do just that with our electric hidden power. Thank god we got that type or else we'd have been screwed. Execute is next and survives a hidden power thanks to the electric resistance, but misses Stun Spore so we finish it with Giga Drain. Rhyhorn obviously goes down to Giga Drain, as does the Alakazam and last out is Gyarados, which is quad weak to electric moves and goes down to hidden power. With that rival fight out of the way, we're on to the Elite Four and we still have yet to deploy any double team cheese. At level 100, Victory Road was uneventful, and you can skip most of the trainers there, and since we're at max level, there's really no reason to face them in the first place. Lorelei is first, and while she's mostly a water specialist, all of her Pokemon know ice moves, which not only are we weak to, but is special in this gen. So, not great. After a few failed attempts, thanks usually in part to Jinx putting us to sleep, we finally get a decent looking run. Seal is out first, and we get off a growth, and it sets up Hail, but that lets us get in two more growths before taking it down with Giga Drain. From there, the rest of her team is really no obstacle. Jinx survives a Giga Drain, missing its chance to put us to sleep with Lovely Kiss, and then goes down to another. From there, it's just her Cloister, but it goes down in one Giga Drain and there's one member of the Elite Four down. I ether up Giga Drain and move on to Bruno. Fighting trainer Bruno is next and he sends out an Onyx first which fortunately allows us to set up a few growths as its Rock Tomb isn't doing much against us at all. After we do lose a few ticks to our speed, he misses an Iron Tail a couple of times and we bring it down with Giga Drain. From there, Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, and the Machamp all go down to the one-two punch of Giga Drain and a Hidden Power each and then the final Onyx is of course taken down by a single Giga Drain. Once again as usual, Bruno provides little to no resistance. Agatha, on the other hand, is an absolute brick wall. I can't use something like Attract here since all of her Pokemon are female. I guess Pokemon has something against lesbians. And we're just unfortunately stuck. We're weak to poison and her Arbok is brutal with its Sludge Bomb. And even if we can get past the Arbok, her second Gengar has Sludge Bomb too. Even with six growths, we can't seem to one-shot any of her team. Well, we could probably one-shot her Golbat if we could get to it, but we just can't even get there. I'm afraid to say it, but we're gonna have to use Double Team now. But what am I going to replace? So at this point, I decide to replace Giga Drain with Double Team, and it may sound terrible, but I do have the TM for Giga Drain from beating Erica, so I can put it back later. And I don't want to get rid of Synthesis because I'm probably going to need it for the champion again like we did earlier. Alright, yep, Giga Drain's the one that's got to go, since all of her team resists it anyway. So to make a long story short, we just have to set up a full array of cheese here. We came this far in the run without Double Team, but there's just no way to get past Agatha without it. So I take the time to set up six Double Teams and then six Growths on her opening Gengar. It's not exactly a safe setup since it does no Shadow Punch, a move that cannot miss, just like Faint Attack and Aerial Ace. In any case, it takes a few tries, but we actually rather quickly find ourselves moving through her team with enough ease. 
Once we're past her opening Gengar, we can actually hit her team easy enough since none of them have double team. We get hit by poisoning from the second Gengar Sludge Bomb though, so we are on a ticking clock by the time her last Haunter comes out. I nearly had a panic attack when she healed the Haunter, but we're able to get our hidden power to roll a higher result on the second shot and bring it down to secure the win. That was super tense guys, you don't know how many times I had to reset for this fight. And if any other hit had landed along the way, we would have lost because of that poison damage. But I'm so happy to finally be done with Agatha. I had hoped to avoid double team, but it was unavoidable here. Anyway, now we can move on to Lance though. And Lance is a tricky pickle. We can actually reliably get to his Dragonite, but unfortunately it's just way too strong a tank here. Even with 6 gross in place, our hidden power is doing so little to it, it's not even funny. Giga Drain does even less since it double resists it. I also tried a toxic synthesis approach, but it's just not happening either. We have to be at full health going into the Dragonite as a wing attack does like 160 damage to us. Yeah, we're gonna have to use double team again. I didn't think we'd have to, but there's no other way around it. So just like with the Agatha fight, we set up 6 double teams and then 6 gross on his Gyarados. His Gyarados is remarkably cooperative, even when we weren't trying double teams, it really doesn't do much to us. After getting all of our setup in, we go on the offensive and bring it down with ease in one electric hidden power. Next out is the Aerodactyl, which can one-shot us with a wing attack if it crits. Fortunately, it misses and we bring it down with a hidden power. Next out is the Dragonite, and our only option is to use hidden power over and over again until it finally faints. We do get the benefit of a timely critical hit, but even if we hadn't used double team, I don't think we'd have survived our way to the critical hit. After Dragonite are two Dragonairs, who both resist hidden power as well, but thanks to Leftovers healing us from the rare occasion they actually do manage to hit us, we're able to miraculously knock them out and get past Lance. Now we heal up, elixir up, and move on to the champion. And the champion is, as you'd expect, a major obstacle. I can't even use the same strategy I used back in Viridian City here. Pidgeot has replaced Wing Attack with Aerial Ace, which while having the same base power, Pidgeot's gone up in levels, which result in better stats since we've been stagnant since we maxed out in Viridian City. Our synthesis growth strategy just isn't going to cut it here. I can't really rely on double team here either, as Aerial Ace bypasses evasion checks and always hits, and not only does Pidgeot know it, but the Charizard does too. So after sitting around a while and numerous failed attempts, I suddenly remember that I have a trapped. It wouldn't work on Agatha due to lesbianism, but Lance's team is all male. So I finally settle on my strategy of attract, growth, giga drain, and hidden power for the moveset, and I've equipped a quick claw as we need it if we have any hope of going first against Charizard or Alakazam. This isn't a great strategy by any means, but it's literally all we can do short of using items in battle, which I'm not going to do. We just need to make attempt after attempt until we can get Quick Claw to work and allow us to use a tract, and then get a tract to do its job. So while you're watching hours of abbreviated attempts on the screen, all made at 4.5 times speed up by the way, so basically quadruple the number of attempts you'd make in a normal length of time, let's explain how there's literally so much here that has to go right that it's not even funny. Thank god we can at least outspeed the Pidgeot normally, otherwise this would be a million times more impossible than it already is. What we have to do here is attract the Pidgeot on our first move and then set up 6 growths. For those keeping score at home, that gives Pidgeot 7 turns to attack us. While Attract does take a lot of the danger out of the equation, it's by no means a safe harbor. Attract makes it so that each attack by the opponent has a 50% chance of going through, but that still means statistically that the Pidgeot will attack us around 3 times each attempt. Pidgeot has several attacks to choose from, but what we would like to see if an attack does go through is Feather Dance. That won't hurt us at all as we aren't using our physical attack stat anyway. Sand Attack is okay, but that's going to hurt our accuracy which then hurts our attack chance. Aerial Ace can one-shot us with a crit, but we can take one or two regular ones if need be. Once we get six gross in place, we can one-shot the Pidgeot with a hidden power. Yes, we do need all six in order to bring it down in one. And then we get to deal with the Charizard, which is where three major problems all come to bear at once. We cannot one-shot the Charizard without a critical hit, so that's a huge problem when you consider that another huge problem is, even if we're at full health, we will lose to a Fire Blast if it hits. It does that much damage. All of this though is secondary however to the fact that Charizard outspeeds us. So we have to rely on either him missing his first attack or our Quick Claw activating allowing us to go first. Whatever we do, our first attack has to be attract, and if we miss it or he hits through the attract, we have to do it all over again. If we manage to somehow get past the Charizard, we then have to deal with Alakazam next and he's no treat either. He also outspeeds us, so unless we're at full health, we will not survive a Psychic, so we need Quick Claw to work or else this run ends at Alakazam. From there I honestly can't say, at the time I'm writing this part of the script I haven't been able to get a hit off on the Alakazam. It's rare enough that we even get to it and we just are not getting Quick Claw to activate against it when we do. 
The more I think about it, I may actually be able to one-shot it with Giga Drain, and from there the rest of his team consists of a Rhydon, which one Giga Drain will end, a Gyarados, which one Hidden Power will end, and an Exeggutor, which has fairly low special defense, so it may be a one-shot even though it resists both of our moves, but it's most likely a two-shot. So really, the back half of his team shouldn't be nearly as hard as the first half of his team. We just have to get there. So after literal hours of attempts over several days, I actually legit lose track of how many attempts this takes. Maybe someday I'll go back and actually count how many attempts this takes as a donation reward or something. But in any event, we try over and over and over, and it just never looks like it's going to be possible. There are just so many things that have to go right. Eventually, though, this run starts out looking surprisingly decent enough. We attract the Pidgeot and set up our growths as we get hit with a Feather Dance, which does nothing to us, and two Aerial Aces, which brings us to red health. But no Sand Attacks, though, so that's a major plus, and we bring down the Pidgeot with Hidden Power. Next out is Charizard, and our Quick Claw activates, allowing us to not only attract the Charizard, but attract Works and immobilizes him. We then get a Hidden Power to bring him low as Charizard is immobilized again, and our Quick Claw activates a third time to let us get a second Hidden Power off bringing him down. Alakazam is out next, and our Quick Claw activates a fourth consecutive time as we go first and bring down the Psychic Speedster with a critical Giga Drain, though the critical hit was not necessary. That was four Quick Claw activations in a row, though, since we got to go first in four consecutive attacks. That's just a 0.16% chance of occurring. But I think we're past the hardest part now, and out comes Executor. This Coconut Tree really gives us the runaround, and we have some absolutely amazing luck here. We hit it hard with Giga Drain despite the type resistance and nearly knock it out with a second, but it puts up a light screen and hangs on with a sliver. From there, it gets full restored, and we just honestly keep going back and forth. He keeps missing Egg Bomb and Sleep Powder, though, but every time we bring it low, he full restores it back to max health. I can't keep Giga Draining it either, I need to save those for Rhydon. Hidden Power does virtually nothing behind a light screen, but after a lot of back and forth and a ton of misses from Executor, despite being put to sleep twice, we rally for the knockout. Rhydon is next, but predictably goes down to one quad effective Giga Drain. Last out is Gyarados, which chunks our attack with Intimidate for a second drop, but again, it doesn't matter, and we hit it with our quad effective Hidden Power, bringing it down for the knockout and getting us the victory. Oh. My. God. I legit cheered when I did this. I was ecstatic. Huge shout out to Spooky Bard in the Discord if you're watching this, bud. He was in the Discord voice chat when I did this, and I'm claiming him as my good luck charm. Holy crap, this was amazing. We get our Sunkern into the Hall of Fame and the credits roll. And that's it, folks. We legitimately just beat Pokemon Leaf Green with only a Sunkern. No items in battle, no cheats, glitches, or exploits, and honestly, no EV training either, come to think of it. We legit just took what we were given at the start. Admittedly, we got amazingly lucky with what we had given to us. If we hadn't gotten a female Sunkern, this would not have been possible, as a tract was an absolute necessity. Our hidden power typing was on point too. If we hadn't gotten electric, I don't know that we could have done this. Maybe water? Rock would have definitely been good, but I don't know. I know we had to use double team and attract cheese along the way, but did anyone expect going into this that I wouldn't have to use those? I'm not sure this would have been possible without them. It sure didn't seem like Agatha and Lance would have been without double team, and the champion absolutely would not have been without attract. Wow, I'm still ecstatic about this win, guys. That was awesome. Probably the most fun I've actually had with a win yet. Thank you all so much for watching, and again, thank you all for helping me celebrate getting to the channel up to 1,000 subscribers. It's grown so fast, and I hope we continue to do so. If you liked the video and want to see more, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to join me and some of your fellow fans, join us in that Discord server down in the description. Thank you all again so much. I really hope you enjoyed. Until next time, guys, like, comment, and subscribe, and go catch them all.